Hello, that's Richard here uh, in Norfolk Bacon, um, just in case you haven't seen the other video. In this little video I'm going to show you how we bone a gammon out and prepare it ready for cooking. And later on we'll show you how uh, once it's been cooked in one of the cooking bags, how we skin it and then vacuum back it ready for your ready for eating. Uh, so we'll start off our bone. We have three here, I'm going to bone out two of them. Uh, this one is actually to be cooked on the bone. Uh, that's going off up to Scotland uh, for a fishing do up there. But, uh, right, so we'll start by just showing you how you bone, bone the gammon out. That's really quite straightforward. Um, I've got the blue gloves on, that's not obsessive hygiene, that's just that your hands smell of bacon if you don't do it, and you've done several of them. Nice smell for a time, but you don't want it all day. So go around the top of the bone first, come down here, that's the kneecap, that's why you go around there, that bit. Just go all the way around the bone, and the bone is going straight down through here. So with one good slice from the top, clear all the way around the bone, like this. Now we turn it up, and from the other end, the same, peel it back. Now up here there's a little bit of bone that sticks out, and uh, that has little bits of gristle attached to it. So along the bone is there, you actually start the cut over here to go round that little piece. And this of course is the uh, femur that would go on at the pelvis bone which is already removed prior to smoking. So again all the way round there just like that and then the bone pull, pulls out easily like that. So that's that one done. Now before, and we'll show you how to tie it up in a minute, uh, but before we do that, what we do is take a little bit of the excess skin off, because it helps the joint to pull together a bit better. So we just cut through there, take this little bit off here, because if not, then once it's tied up, that skin tends to overlap, and then that's difficult when you want to skin it after it's been cooked. So we take this one right off there. A little bit extra fat because the time that's cooked be a bit too much. So we're now stream, streamlined it back to there. Now I'll show you how to tie the butcher's knots here. And for that start Around to my shoulder there, you should be able to see this. This is the straight cord sort of butcher slip knot. Now to me is my only because that's the only one I do know. So put the string underneath the gammon like that, pass it over the top. This hand bring it up with the string lying back across the palm of your hand. Nip the two together. And then with this one, just make a little loop, easy as that. And then this loose end, you pass through through the hole twice, in actual fact. And then that just pulls up into a knot. Then this is where you can see the element of slip. And now to finish off so that it doesn't come undone, just put your hands up underneath the string just turn it round to make a loop get hold of the loose end of the string the remainder of the knots and just pull it tight and all that does is locks the knot in position and stops it from sliding undone here we go we'll put about three round here, so again underneath, up with this hand, form a loop, once, twice, 
pull it just like that. If it looks easy, that's because it is when you get used to doing it. It's quite easy, in actual fact, to pull this string too hard and break the string through. That puts enough pressure on there quite easily to snap that string. Right. There you go. So that's that one already. Now we'll uh, take a break now. I'll bone this second one out. And then I'll show you when we're putting them in the cook bags uh, and how, how we tie them up. Okay, so now we've got the two bone out and one to go on the bone. So with that, I'll get these cooking bags and these are the size. They are the heat shrinkable. Uh, they make them quite a practical. So you can just see how on the website at the moment, they generally tend to be done to order. Uh, we can't do half hams in these because uh, the first one you saw the bone through and you'd have it. Uh, it's just not a desirable thing so we cook whole ones of these on the bone. These ones we can easily cut into joints when once they're cooked and uh, we'll show you that a little bit more. Tomorrow, and we'll show you me skinning them uh, the following day. Okay, that's it for the moment. Right, welcome back. Uh, we now cooked the hams. I haven't shown you the bit where they actually in the boiler. You saw them going in the heat shrink or bags. But uh, if the steam has the same effect on that camera as it does on my glasses, you aren't actually going to see a lot. So uh, I'll skip that bit out. They've been cooked. And then they've gone through a rapid cooling process. Uh, when I cook them, I cook them to 72 degrees. We have a meat probe thermometer uh, which we calibrate each time we're dipping it in the boiling water that registers 100 degrees. And you just stick it in the thickest bit of the ham and we know they're up to temperature. Now, where we did have three hams, two of them. This is only two days later, and two of them are gone now. The one I cooked on the bone is now on its way to Scotland uh, for a fishing trip, and, and that's a good example. A nice group of people who have been fishing now together for, well, the group has changed a bit, 40 years. Every year they go, they take a cooked ham on the, uh, cooked ham on the bone, 
ribs of beef, uh, some bacon, and sausages. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So that's on its way. The other ham I had to skin today and started using it. Uh, but look, I've managed to save one to demonstrate how we skin them and how they come out of the cook bag. So then, I'll just show you how this is when once they've been in these bags that retains all the juice. This is the pure fat as they go to the to the side of. So we'll split this open and demonstrate what happened. You'll see how all that it strains at the moment and keep all the flavour in there. The nice thing with the way we cure our hams and bacon is that it's not too salty um, so we don't have to soak the stuff before we cook it. It goes just straight in the bag and is boiled from there. I'll just put this little bit out of the way. I'll uh, pop down there. And you can see the ham straight off the excess lumps of fat. You'll notice for this operation we have full protective gear on with gloves, apron and the arm protectors to uh, keep us clean. Really. It's a good hygiene thing. So now cut the strings through. Remove them like this. You see that still has a nice shape to it. And I'll come off. There you go. I can tell you, you won't get it on there, but it smells lovely. <laughs> now then, we skin them, or skin from where the tail would be, around that way. Uh, up by doing it in that direction, generally you'll get the skin to separate from the ham nicely without pulling all the surface fat away from the ham. If you go in the other direction, that will actually peel off and you'll end up with a, a ham with no, no fat on it at all. Odd bits will dislodge, but there's enough on here. You see now that's peeling back. So that's uh, you can do. In fact, we're filming this in the evening. It must make me quite hungry now. And my son Jack is on the camera. And if I talk nicely to him, I'll get him to do me some more videos when he's on summer holiday, which he's looking a bit surprised at the moment. But we'll put other little ones on about. Uh, I'll show you our sausages, how we make the sausages, all natural casings, and uh, you can see what goes into that. And uh, it should be a bit of interest. Right, so there we are. That's all skinned. Maybe that's a lovely cooked ham that is, Smell, smelling nicely. And uh, that will probably weigh. Well, I'll put it in a bag and then we'll have a look, but that probably weighs about four and a half kilos there. What I'll do is, we'll stop in a second, I'll put this in a bag, seal it up, and then I'll show you the section through from the other hat which I skinned and started using earlier on today. So we'll come back to you in a couple of seconds. Alright, so that's another little bit done. I've been through, put this one in the vacuum packer and sealed it up so that will keep nicely now for a good long time. I did put it on the scales and where I said that weighed about four and a half kilos that actually weighs four point seven so that wasn't a bad bad guess really. So that's a that's a whole ham and you can see it's plenty of meat there, slows all the way through. That lasts a long while, lovely thing. Now, I did mention that I had to skin one of the other hams and start on that today. And uh, I've just got that out of the cooked meat fridge. That shows you one in section, in actual fact. So you see what's up, good size slices. And uh, that weighs about two kilos again. That. So that gives you an idea 
4.72 kilos. There's a good lot of meat on that. But if you want to do smaller joints or have a smaller piece, we can cut them through this way, and that gives you a nice little horseshoe because you just, that bit sits flat down on the plate. You can chop the down on there. Okay, well that about concludes the cooked ham and what they look like, and uh, you've seen the process for there. What we'll do is I'll just clear this away, and then in a second or two I'll show you the ingredients that we use. Uh, so as you can see it, we uh, used to actually cure the bacon and ham with. So we're back in a second. Alright then, so uh, that's all that bit done with. This is the last little bit where I said I'd show you the ingredients that we used to cure the bacon and, and hams and collar bacon with. Uh, very straightforward and simple for that matter. Dark brown sugar. Uh, in the brine, because they say that's brine mix, and that's to us that's a much nicer way of curing products like that because they're totally immersed in the brine, you get a good even coverage all around. Unlike the dry cured stuff where they take things like the salts and rub it on the meat, it's very intense. This the meat just absorbs what it needs, and generally, uh, about a week in the brine is sufficient. Uh, so that's it. Right, so brown sugar. This are the curing, natural occurring minerals, and that's uh, potassium nitrate and sodium nitrite. Uh, just those two uh, are used for curing nowadays. And then uh, here we have juniper berries, which uh, we just put some of those and they flew in the brine and uh, help impart a real nice flavour of the bacon. Those three are all mixed together with the fourth element, which is just, just the water. And obviously they all dissolve in there and uh, make a nice brine. Yeah. So that's that. This I've just brought, I'll set that in there, and it's all inside. That's just an example of the blend of the woods that we use to smoke with. Predominantly that's oak, but there are a few other little components in there and we like to use shavings with some finer particles uh, which we no longer call sawdust because uh, those of you that are aware of the health and safety um, as I discovered once I mentioned using sawdust and saying we had a fire going and uh, that rather sets alarm bells ringing with the health and safety. It's all dust liable or explosion, and well, that would uh, sort of smoke up a bit quicker than I want to. So we stick to shavings, and that gets a nice heat. Right, I think that's uh, about everything I can think of at the moment. But like this arm, the telly, having no thought of it, we'll do separate little videos to show you. These are chipolatas were made using all natural casings and likewise the sausages, butcher sausages, they're always popular and uh, yeah, yeah, nice things to have. Do lots and lots of chipolatas for those and whilst they may not be on the website at the moment, keep looking and they'll come on there. If not, you have the email contact or the phone number, by all means give me a ring. Uh, ask and we'll be happy to do you some. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, that you'll look forward to seeing the next one. Thanks very much for your time and look up for the next Norfolk Bacon video. Bye.